Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Ranga Rao Karanam. In this video, we would be talking about coding standards. Why are coding standards important? And how do you make sure that you have great coding standards? And how do you make sure that your project meets all the coding standards which are set? That's what we would be discussing in this specific video. Whenever we create an application, what do we do? We write a lot of code, right? We'll probably write a lot of code in the language you choose. Maybe Java, JavaScript, Python. The thing is, each of these languages have a set of coding standards. If you go to Python, you have a pep with all the coding standards for Python. If you go to Java, there are Java coding standards. The same is the case with JavaScript. So there are certain practices that are followed with each of these languages. There are certain standards that programmers of each of these languages follow. So that's number one things which are part of the coding standards. The standard practices of that specific language. How do you name variables? How do you name classes? How do you name packages? How do you name modules? These are all big part of the coding standards. That's number one. Number two part of the coding standards are things you'd want to follow consistently in your specific application. How you create components? How do you want to create packages? What are the different layers that you would want to have? How do you want to write unit tests? All these are part of whatever standards that you have set as part of your specific project. This ensures that whichever programmer writes the code, it meets the project standards. So we talked about two levels until now. One is general language level. So there are Java best practices which you would always follow and those are part of the Java coding standards. They are applicable irrespective of the project which you are in. The second one are the project specific conventions which you would want to follow in that specific project. This allows that everybody who is developing stuff in that project is following the same convention. So that whenever somebody new comes in, he will be able to adjust to all that stuff very, very easily. What is the best way to ensure that the coding standards are followed? The best way that you can take to ensure that coding standards are followed is to make sure that you have static analysis in place. If you have great static analysis tools like Sonar or Checkstyle or Finebugs or PMD, if you have them in place and you check the reports consistently, that would ensure that any smells in code or any vulnerabilities or bugs, you would find them out very, very easily. At the start of the project, set the standards that you would want to follow. Say that I don't want to have any bugs. I don't really want to have any vulnerabilities that are found by the static analysis tool. I'd want to have as minimum technical depth as possible. I'd want to have at least 95% coverage on all the classes. I'd want to have less than 4% duplication. These are what are called coding standards. You set what are the acceptable standards for your project. Once you have the coding standards set, what you can do is you can create a quality gate. So in Sonar, one of the things you can do is create a quality gate setting. I want zero bugs. I want zero vulnerabilities. I would want coverage of at least 95%. I would want duplication less than 2%. And what happens whenever a new file is committed into your version control? If you make the quality gate check as part of Sonar enabled and you run Sonar as part of your continuous integration, what happens? As soon as a piece of code is committed, you run Sonar and the quality gate runs and you get immediate feedback whether the new piece of code has passed the quality gate or not. If the quality gate fails, then the build would fail and the developer would get an email saying, your piece of code has broken the quality gate. So look at it immediately. That's the best way to check coding standards, having a great quality gate in place. One of the important things to make sure is to have great static analysis but that's not really sufficient because not all things can be found by having 
a static analysis tool. It's also important to have manual review present as part of your processes. So it's very important that you have peer reviews for the code that's being written, for the unit test that is being written. In this video, we talked about coding standards. We talked about the fact that you should have standards around all the code to ensure that the code is consistent. You should have standards around duplication of code. You should have standards around your unit test. You should have standards around your unit test coverage and you should have processes around them as well. You should have processes like continuous integration to run static analysis tools around your code continuously to make sure that you have a quality gate in place so that you find code coding standard violations very, very fast. The other important part is to make sure that you have good review processes. One of the things you can always do is to make the quality gate part of your definition of done. So make sure that passing the quality gate is a very important part of your definition of done. Make sure that your quality gate is well defined and that would ensure that your code is always adhering to the coding standards, at least those things which are done by static analysis. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.